took a little walk through glory with him, don't you? I don't know what it's going to be like when I get there. Um, I can only imagine. I might shout. I might, <clears throat> I might not have much to say. I might just be in awe of the glory of God. I have a feeling I will hit my knees, and I have a feeling I will do some somersaults. But I won't be an angel, and I won't have wings, so I'll have to be careful about that. But there's no pain or injuries in heaven, so that'll be good, too. So just uh, can't wait to see him for the first time face-to-face. -face. What a day that will be. Now, until then, God gives us an opportunity to have vision of him. He gave us his word, and in this word, we get a picture of God. When I began the series on vision, people thought I was going to be talking about seeing things way into the future, and God can do that. God has, and God can, and, and, and probably will from time to time, but it's not just about looking at a future destination. The, the one that he cares about is called heaven, but in my life, I don't know how long I'm going to live. Uh, I don't know all the things about the path, but I know the calling that God has on my life, and I want to be faithful to that. So really, when God speaks to me in vision, it's so that I can see him and know him personally. God desires a relationship with me. Some people think, well, God's just up in the heaven, and he's kind of wound up the clock a little bit, and he set it up, and everything's in order, and, and he's a detached God because everything that that is going to be, is going to be because God did all that. Now, God is a God who foreknows. I understand that. He is omniscient and he's omnipresent. I understand how God does that. But God is, is also the, the, not only the author of salvation, the plans that are there, but he's the author of us and he wants to watch us as we do our life. Individually, not just as a whole, but he cares about you. You know the Word of God says that he knows every hair on your head, every, every thought in your heart. He knows everything there is to know about you. He knows what's going to happen to you before because he's the omnipresent God. But, but he cares intimately about you. Now listen, that means he wants to hear your prayers, spoken or non-spoken. He wants to hear your songs, whether you're vocalizing them whether you're humming them or you're just thinking about them at 4 o'clock in the morning. Whatever it is, he wants to get up with you, walk with you, talk with you. He wants to be one with you. This is a God who loves every intricate part of our lives. God has a plan for you, and he wants to hear from you. He wants to talk to you. Psalms 56 verse 8 says, You number my wonderings. You, God, know my wonderings. You put my tears into your bottle. My tears, he collects. Those things are valuable to him. As a matter of fact, he tells us that those are more valuable to him than jewels. Money means nothing. He's the God who has all. But when it comes from our heart, that has value to him. He says, are they not in your book? He records those things. Of course, you know the one that's quoted so much, Jeremiah 29, 11, For I know the thoughts, I know the plans that I have for you. Now, our kids get up and go off to college. Saw on Facebook, Kirby and Morgan. Uh, Kirby and Sheila put Morgan, and she's now in college. And, uh, probably anxious at home and all those things, and her bright eyes looking at the big college and all that. And, you know, college kids, they, they start with this major, then they go to this major, then they go to this major, and God's got it all figured out already. He knows those things. But you see, though he knows those things, what matters to him is intricately walk with you through those things. Those decisions that you have, he wants to be there. We used to sing a song, have a little talk with Jesus. Y'all remember that? Tell him all about it. He will hear our prayers, answer by and by. Feel a little prayer wheel turning. Know a little fire is burning. Have a little talk with Jesus. What's the last part? 
makes it right. Aren't you good at that? Now, if we're going to have vision, we need to grow in our relationship with God. We need to, we want to see God, we want to see what God sees, we want to move as God leads, we want to hear what God says, and God wants a conversation. Have you found Habakkuk yet? Stand with me, Habakkuk. I gave you plenty of time. <laughs> Chapter number two, begin in verse one. I will stand my watch and set myself on the rampart and watch to see what he will say to me. I love this part. And what I will answer when I am corrected. Habakkuk knew he was wrong. And he knew that, but he had to share his heart with God anyway. Then the Lord answered me and said, write the vision. Make it plain on tablets that he, who, that he may run who reads it. For the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it will speak and it will not lie. Though it tarries, wait for it because it will surely come to pass. It will not tarry. Behold, the proud is soulless not upright in him, but the just shall live by his faith. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, now I, I ask you to, uh, you, you speak to hearts, Lord. You speak to individually in here. And I know that that's the kind of God that you are. And, and Father, I will do the best to share what it is that your word, uh, you put on my heart from your word. And I will do my best to preach your word and only your word. But Father, all is vain if you don't speak to hearts. I can speak to ears, but you're the only one who can speak to hearts. So, Lord Jesus, speak to us personally. Father, we will be benefited by it. You can do more in a moment. You can do more in a moment than I can do in a lifetime. Do it today. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. You can be seated. God wants a conversation with us. A conversation is when both people speak. Sometimes... We want God to be like the radio to broadcast. And sometimes in our prayers, it's like we are broadcasting. And we're telling God uh, what he needs to do. And God, don't you understand this? And God, don't you see this? And sometimes we'll say, God, don't you care? But God wants a conversation. That means he'll talk and we'll listen. And then God will yield the floor and we will talk and he will listen. Are you not amazed by that? Seven billion people on the earth. I didn't count them. That's what they tell me. He knows the hair on every head of every one. He knows the impulse on every heart. God cares for every one of us individually. And when you bow your heart and you lift your voice to God, you have his undivided attention. Only God can do that, but praise God, he can. He wants a conversation, and, and that's really what the book of Habakkuk is about. It's a conversation with God. It begins in chapter 1, and Habakkuk's mad at God. It's okay if you're mad at God. He can, he's a big God. He can handle it. If you just share with him honestly and be open, he'll tell you the reason. Maybe he'll give you part of it. Maybe he'll give you all of it. He, does, he very seldom gives me all of it. Because somewhere in there, he's just got to say, here's what's happening, trust me. And, and he was mad because he had heard that the children of Israel, God's chosen people, were going to be taken captive and, and, and sent to Babylon. Why would you do this, God? God says, I'm going to do a work that is so big. You, If I told you, you wouldn't even understand. See, really what's happening Habakkuk is, I'm going to raise up the Chaldeans, those terrible folks. You see, what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to do a miracle in their life. I'm going to draw them to myself. Read the book of Daniel sometime. Old Nebuchadnezzar bowed before God. And when he didn't listen, God let him walk around on all fours eating grass. I mean, God will get your attention. Amen. <laughs> What, there, you can, there's an easy path and a hard path, and you get to choose which one. Amen? Pray that we hear that. God wants a conversation. So then he, God says, I, I'm doing this great and mighty work. And, and in chapter 1, verse 12, he says, Are you not from everlasting, O Lord, my God, my Holy One? 
We shall not die, O Lord. You have appointed them for judgment, O rock. You have marked them for correction. You are of pure eyes than to behold evil. You cannot look on wickedness. Why do you look on those who deal treacherously and hold your tongue? When the wicked devours a person more righteous than himself. God had told him he was doing a work, and yet Habakkuk still had an issue with this. So that's why he says in, in, in chapter 2, verse 1, I, I, I'm going to go stand my watch. Basically, I'm going to go where I'm supposed to be, and I'm going to wait to hear from God. And, and when I get corrected, amen, I mean, some of y'all missed that, but I, I talk to the Lord all the time, and I tell him what I think, and he's a big God. He can take it, but then I have to sit back and say, I know I'm wrong. And yet, Lord, I need to share with you this. You want to hear my heart. God, my, I'm hurting. I'm broken. It's difficult. There's some circumstances called life. I don't understand. Sometimes it looks like the devil's winning. Sometimes it looks like, like good people are getting chewed up and spit out. God, why do you allow don't you care? Oh, he cares intimately. But he cares for a personal relationship. And I love how God answers this. He doesn't give him the whole program. But listen to me, church, he gives the process. Are y'all ready for the process? Are you ready for the process? Because if you're ready for the process, you can learn how to get into the presence of God and hear the Almighty speak and, and find the wisdom that God has for you personally. So he says in verse 2, the Lord answered me and said, write the vision. Write the vision. Folks, you don't ever see me do this. I don't take meticulous notes, but this is part of my teaching this morning, so I'm going to make it real plain what I'm doing. I'm turning the place, page. Y'all see that? I wrote it down. I wrote it down. Me and the Lord have been talking. I've been chewing on this for a while. I got different places that I have my time with the Lord. Sometimes I like to get up early in the morning and go outside in the summertime with my cup of coffee and my Bible. Can I get an amen? amen. Sometimes I go to my place inside and turn on the light. Me and the Lord have a little talk. And you see, if it's a conversation, he may have something to say. So when he says something, I write it down. Now, I like these books. I've got three or four different types. I mean, there's, y'all watch it? Y'all can't see all of it, I guess. But there's writing on there, and I, I'll fill it up, and then I'll go find me another one. I've got some people who uh, breathe life into me. Uh, some dear friends of mine, David and Patty Turpin, they gave me this one. David's the building inspector in Habersham County. Got a dear, dear wife. Put J. Brian Stevens, Ph.D., journal. And I looked at that the first time, and I like, that's my name, but I don't have a Ph.D. I'm not Dr. Stevens. I don't even have a D.D. That's a doctrine of divinity. The only D.D. I have is didn't do it. <laughs> Amen? When I was in seminary, we had three children in 24 months, and I decided I'd rather be married than Dr. Stevens. But I looked on the back of it, Ph.D., and they put on the back of it, praise him daily. I thought, well, amen. I can do that. So if you want to call me Ph.D., you know how you pronounce that? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't do that. It's funny, of all my sermon, that's the only thing you're going to remember out of the whole thing. But I take my Bible and I open it up. And I systematically go through the Word of God. And then I have my quiet time. God speaks. 
I'll read some Old Testament. I'll read some Psalms. I'll read my proverb for the day. I'll read some New Testament. And then if I'm studying towards something, I'll write those things down. But Adrian Rogers is a whole lot smarter than me, and he had a lot of things they called Adrianisms. And one of them that stuck with me is he said, the worst stink is better than the best mind. If God says something, write it down. If God's got a word, how many of you had a dream and you thought that was the most profound dream in your life and you'd remember it forever? You go in there to get a cup of coffee and you can't remember what it was for life. Have you? <laughs> amen, amen. How many of you have had a profound thought that, or, or you were reading your Bible and there was something that was amazing there. It was like the heavens opened up and you heard from God and you said, amen, praise you. Lord love you. You're so wonderful. Now, what was that? <laughs> now, don't take my, I've got different kinds of these. Um, I got this one from Charles Stanley. Actually, I got it from In Touch Ministries. It was free. Charles didn't send it to me. Chuck, if you're close to him, which I'm not. My wife, I, I, it may have been my daughter gave me this one. Um, I started in a series because people said I needed to write. I'll talk more about that in a little bit. And uh, I still hadn't done it yet. This one's almost empty. But you need to have a, something that you carry with you. I carry these with me all the time. Because if God speaks, you need to do it. On my phone now, I've got notes to where if I'm driving down the road and God speaks to me. By the way, uh, usually my car gets the sermon before you do. Amen. Or the squirrels. I have, I have, I have a place where I can walk on my property and I, I talk to the Lord out loud. If there's a hunter out there, they think I'm crazy, but he's on my property. He doesn't need to be out there anyway. But I have an app on my phone to where I can just speak into it and it'll record the notes too. Right? If God speaks to you coming down the road, don't write it. They'll arrest you for that. They'll give you a ticket for that. They'll think you're talking on your phone or something crazy like that. But you need to have something that you can write those things down. If I say it to you, it's not going to have much weight to you. But Habakkuk 2.2 2 says, write it, the vision. Now, if you're not expecting him to speak, why should you have a book? But if you expect him to speak, and he does speak, then you can have something to do. You can do it. I've got little ones in my, uh, that I carry around sometimes with me in my pocket because I don't want to do it. And, and some of y'all have, have seen me. I carry a backpack, and you think I'm trying to be cool, you know, trying to act young. No, I just have all these things I tote around. I have a devotion I use every day. It's called My Utmost for His Highest. I actually am not using it every day now. I have used it. Uh, this one's called Jesus Calling. How many of you have seen Jesus Calling? Some of y'all really need to pick up on this. It's written by the name, a woman by the name of Sarah Young, and she's speaking as if God is speaking, and it takes you probably less than 30 seconds, but I promise you that 30 seconds can put a thought that you'll chew on all day long, and God can add to, and God can bless. Oswald Chambers is deep. Sarah's not too deep, but she's good. But you need to have something where you're, you're going to have some time of talking with the Lord. How many of you begin your day with the Lord in the Word of God, and that will, it, it, you'll, it'll grow during the day? Like yeast in the bread, it just grows in the day. I'm going to say it again, and I'm going to move forward. But I'm, I'm really belaboring the point here, if you haven't caught on here. If you're not expecting it, you're never going to do it. But if you have an expectation that you can meet with God and that God will meet with you, that you can have a conversation and that the God of the universe will speak and God wants you to keep it, to meditate on it, to think on these things. Look, if God, he may tell you something 10 years from now that's going to come, but I promise you he'll tell you something that you're going to deal with today and you're going to need today. I can't tell you how many times I've gone to the Word of God and, and I've read something there and I thought, Lord, I don't know why you're telling me this, but as the day has come along, then I've not found out exactly what it is he was trying to tell me. Write the vision. Make it plain. Make it plain. Don't argue with him. 
He says something to you, say, yes, sir. And don't edit it. Uh, when I was, I've been, I've had people try to tell me that I needed to write. And I didn't really know how to write, Mark. And, and, and I would write as if I was going to read the book. And he said, no, 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 no. I finally found out. They said, get down on your laptop and just go and don't stop. As you're thinking it, as you're feeling it, go and just type and type and type and type. You can edit later. If you're having time with God and God speaks, don't argue with him. You can go back and edit it later. Get it down. Know that that's important. If you have a time, you can begin the next day by reviewing what you heard the day before. If you've written it down a week, two weeks later, you can go back and it's fresh to you. You don't have to write down everything that you read. It's not an exhaustive thing. But if there's an impulse on your heart, did y'all catch that? Then you need to be ready for it. Make it plain. God speaks where his children can listen and understand. You can reflect back to it. It's like a road map. It doesn't do any good if you can't understand it. Make it plain, not complicated. God's not trying to confuse you. It's easy steps to follow. Understandable. Listen to me, it's doable. He says, write the vision, make it plain on tablets, that he may run who reads it. It's not to be put up on a shelf. You can have 50 of these things that are stuck up on a shelf and they're going to do you no good. It's an action plan. You need to follow it systematically, progressive, produces energy. It produces synergy among us. New Holland, let me talk to you for just a second. In your constitution and bylaws here, do you know that you have a mission statement? A purpose statement. How many of you know? How many of you can tell me what it is? Anybody? If that doesn't tell you something, but let me read it to you. And by the way, it's good, almost. <laughs> the purpose of New Holland Baptist Church is to glorify God. Can I get an amen? amen? It's to glorify God by making disciples of local residents and the nations of the world through worship, evangelism, teaching, preaching, and ministries of loving service. Is there anything wrong with that? Not a thing. Except, y'all know what I mean when I say that's a Sunday school answer. Nothing wrong with it. It's good, but how do you do it? It, it says we're supposed to glorify God by making disciples of local residents and the nations of the world. So how are we doing that? Give me the how-to. Well, we worship here. We should do evangelism. We should teach. That's discipleship. That sounds biblical. Preaching. I'm all for that. Ministries of loving service. I'm all for that too. But if you gave this to someone and said, all right, here's your mission plan. Here's your purpose. Go out and do it. They'd say, huh? It's kind of like going to the football huddle and saying, 78 fly, left, zip, on two. You start looking at each other and say, what are we doing? <laughs> Amen? Amen. And then you get a new coach, and they change it up. As soon as you learn the plan, they change the, the calls. You're like, what? Look, make it plain that he who reads may run with it. When God speaks to you, he's going to say, call Deborah. Or maybe you need to call Deborah, and this is what I want you and Deborah to do together. By the way, I'm not signing you up for something. <laughs> that was an example, church. 
You hear what I'm saying? When he called me to preach in 1986, I can tell you where I was. I can tell you what I was going through. And, and it's been, I have never doubted my call in the ministry. I never doubted that God created me to be a preacher. I'm good with that. I'm really good with that. But from time to time, I've had to go back and say, preacher, evangelist. Preacher, no, preacher. Not evangelist, preacher. I did church planning once. Pastor to church, do go start churches. No, pastor church. And bought a farm one time. No, <laughs> just pastor church. No farm, no farm. There's things that come along the way that the vision can clarify you. A yes is a yes and a no is a no and you need something to help you along the way. Amen. That way you don't have to start over every time. See, y'all didn't know I was taking five pages of sermon notes that I wasn't using. But I am. It's a process. It's not an end. He said, for the vision is yet for an appointed time. There's going to be a time. He's going to tell you what you need before you need it. He says, but in the, at the end it will speak. It will not lie. When, when I accepted the calling to, to the ministry, I asked the Lord to confirm it with me. And he did. And there was two things that I was looking for. One happened within weeks. Within weeks, it was unbelievable how God brought a person I had never seen before and never seen since, and they confirmed what God was calling me in my life to do. And I'm grateful for that. But there was something else that God laid on my heart that I have not yet seen. We've been close. I thought it was going to come a few times, but I haven't seen it the way God promised it. And you know, I know I'm here, and I'm just praying that I get to see it here because I know I'm going to see it before I go to heaven because God promised it. He spoke. He gave me the vision for it. I see it. I know it. And like, like Joshua, be strong and courageous. And every day I get up not doubting God, but I'm waiting on God. Look what this says. It says, write the vision, make it plain on tablets, that he may run who reads it. For the vision is yet for an appointed time. Not yet, but an appointed time. At the end it will speak, it will not lie. Though it tarries, wait for it, because it will surely come. It will not tarry. In God's timing, he said, if you heard me, if, if we're there, believe it. Trust it. Don't doubt it. Go back and, and read it again and know that that's, it's real. I love you. I wouldn't lead you astray. My God never does that. Wait for it. But work for it now. If you're waiting until God does something and you're doing the same things that you've always done, but you're waiting for God to do something different, that doesn't make sense. If you're with God and God lays something on your heart, that means he wants to do something in your today that may have a result then, but begin today. If you hear this sermon and you say, yes, Lord, yes, but you don't get up and have a quiet time, you don't get a tablet. You don't have a pencil. You're not expecting anything. Then why should God speak? Habakkuk was there, and, and he knew that he was incorrect because he knew the nature of God, but he didn't know it ex specifically. I almost said a different word. He didn't know specifically what it was, so he said, Lord, Correct me, and I'm ready. And then hear this. He says, behold, the proud 
That's the one that's got everything figured out. His soul is not a pride in him, but the just shall live by his faith. Does that not sound like the New Testament to you? Well, it's because it's quoted in the New Testament. Your pride may say, I'm good. I, I got it. I know what I want in my life. I got it all planned out. Why should God have to chase you down and tackle you to speak? If God wants to get your attention, why does he have to do all of these gymnastics of circumstances to get our attention? Why can't we wake up every day and say, here am I, Lord, speak. And by the way, before you speak, the answer is already yes. Today, tomorrow, next week, next year, 10 years. I don't care, Lord, but I'm grateful. I'm grateful that you let me be a part. I'm grateful that you have a plan for me, who I am, with my DNA, with my calling, with the spiritual gifts that you've given me. Your voice is going to be about that. It might be challenging. It might be hard. But, Lord, I have already made up my mind that I'm going to be walking by faith and not by sight. Though I don't understand it all yet, yes. Though it may seem too, too big and too mighty and too, too tall and too strong, yet I still will trust you. Blessed be the name of the Lord. I wonder what God could do with us folks. Maybe we need to put an action plan on that mission statement. Maybe we need to have a clarifying work of what exactly that was going to look like. And if God, look in this building today. Look around. We got the balconies. What? Half full, two thirds? Choirs up. And God loves us individually, Denise. He loves you. <laughs> Wonder what God could do in this amount of talent with the spiritual blessings in these people, Bradley. Do we expect him to move? Do we expect him to speak? Are we so proud to think that we don't need God? I'm desperate for him. I want to hear from him. By the way, y'all got shortchanged on this. Because y'all got me. Don't settle for that. Go to the source. Y'all hear me? What could God do? I got one warning. Just one. Well, one's not a warning. One's just a blessing. Try God. Test him. He's already promised. That means we know he'll do it. So, try him. But here's the warning. All this is because he wants a personal one-on-one -on -one relationship. And that begins with coming to know Christ as your personal Savior and Lord. There's only one way to, to the Father. He is the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by him. That's a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. He is the door. That means that's the door to God. He is the truth. That's how you're going to find God. And if you're here today and your pride and your ego are keeping you from a personal relationship with God, that's a terrible place to be. It's a terrible place to be. You're playing with eternity. Wouldn't you rather have a God of the universe who created all, who knows all, who wants to have a conversation with you? Who cares? Wouldn't you like to have a relationship with him? Get the sin out of the way? He'll forgive that. All the past, all the failures, he'll forgive that. And you can step into his presence clean. 
you don't know Jesus Christ as your personal Savior and Lord, you're missing it. You just don't know it. Accept Him today. If you do know the Almighty God, don't ignore Him. Let's pray. Father, thank You for the opportunity that we've had today to come to this place. I thank You for Your Word. Oh, how you love us. Jesus, what you did to make it available to us where we could reach out and, and speak to you, and cry out, repent of our sins, ask you to do for us what only you can do. Father, I pray that you made the challenge plain to your people and begin the process of growing us into your likeness, having a conversation with you. The Lord, if there's someone here that does not know you as Savior, speak to their hearts today. Call them to yourself. Lord, may they find humility. May they see the need. May they find the boldness and the courage. Lord, give them the boldness and courage to come and receive what only you can give. Father, may we give you praise and honor and glory because you so definitely deserve it. Bless us this day. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.